Hello, this is Taco to Bean, and today we are going to be reading SAP 3812. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. By order of the Overseer Air Council, the following A file describes a level 13 ex existential threat and, and is level 5 3812 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. Yay! We're er, 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 breaking rules already. I've never. 3812. Level 5 Top Secret. Containment Class Keter. Disruption Class Eki. Risk Class Danger. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3812 is only partially contained. Due to SCP-3812's nature to any attempt to contain it will invariably lead to lead to failure, and despite quarantine efforts and ongoing research, the classification of Keter is essentially meaningless. At any point, for any reason, SCP-3812 could not only reach containment on a global scale, but also cause potential catastrophic damage to the Earth and local reality. The extent of SCP-3812's capabilities are unknown, and further research is required. However, or pending reassessment by the Foundation and Classification Committee, 3812 will continue to be classified as Keter until further notice. Basically, it should be considered a polyon. See containment and proposal brief below for more information. Keter class containment proposal breach. Brennan L. Theodaro O A and Conwell O J. Character class container proposal Sickler Box First Edition Volume One Series One Foundation Research Press. SP thirty eight twelve is to be constantly monitored by Mobile Task Force or scanning Event sixty six Starlight Nights. Who are to maintain a five millimeter quarantine in area of exclusion around SCP thirty eight twelve. The acting MTF. FGY-66, team lead in conjunction and with, with Site-86 research that F is allowed lot of fiat authority in regards to any aspects of SCP-3812's containment. Special care must be taken in order to prevent unnecessary exposure to SCP-3812. Current containment efforts focus on mitigating SCP-3812's influence on population centers, as well as research into full breadth of SCP-3812's anomalous capabilities in order to establish a more comprehensive containment procedure. Information security teams are to monitor all forms of digital media in order to prevent widespread awareness of SCP-3812. SCP-3812 has an active, aggressive, anomalous influence on reality. SCP-3812 is capable of altering events throughout time, says Emerson E. Reality Altering Entities and Narrative First Edition. To prevent this containment, due to the nature of these alterations, it is highly unlikely that any individual affected by SCP-3812's anomalous influence will be aware that they are affected, and it is highly likely that most affected individuals no longer exist as a result of SCP-3812's influence. Though any attempt to to this how often this has happened would be speculative. Did I, did I say that right? Who cares? Description SCP-3812 is a reality-altering entity. Due to SCP-3812's latent effect on reality, it is nearly impossible to describe SCP-3812 in any meaningful way. All that is known about SCP-3812 is that it was once Sam Howell, a non-anomalous African-American and a human being who was believed to have died in 1996. Sometime shortly after its death, SCP-3812 was observed rising out of its grave and disappearing. SCP-3812 was brought to the Foundation's attention after its presence resulted in a, dem in a demolition of, of an apartment building in War Warsaw, of Poland. Due to its anomalous capabilities, SCP-3812's appearance varies significantly, making it exceedingly difficult to track. SCP-3812 is currently located at twenty-eight 
26, 26, 49 degrees south. Um, 136, 56, 27 degrees west. I'm not sure how that works over the South Pacific Ocean. I'm not sure how to read coordinates. I'm sorry. SCP-3812 exhibits science been extremely advanced and Eggman and Vector Schizophrenia a complex. Specifically, extreme paranoia, extreme dysphoria, extreme mania, and depression, inability to properly perceive their surroundings, inability to discern the difference between the real and imagined, inability to differentiate between living and dead beings, inability to control expressions of emotion, hearing voices that are not there, seeing things that are not there, feeling or otherwise experiencing civil light that do not exist. From developed complex deterioration of human cognition affects individuals way over time. Lucy, safety net of of catatonia, that would usually result from overall, I mean, deterioration of their faculties. As a result, their consciousness is forced to watch in horror as their, their mind, the singular translator between conscious thought and physical world, reduces their perception to an inconceivable disorder of real and imagined stimuli. It would be akin to being on a sailing ship during a hurricane blindfolded, lashed to a, a steering wheel you cannot turn, all while the ship burns around you. Mm. In the 20 years since SCP-3812 was initially discovered, these symptoms have grown steadily worse. Originally, SCP-3812 was responsive if the question is not help in managing its condition from, S from Foundation researchers. Over time, SCP-3812 became more isolated and withdrawn, eventually becoming un entirely unresponsive and acting in erratic and unpredictable ways. Currently, SCP-3812 is not able to accurately perceive the world around it, and will occasionally... Jeez, another one? Usually only if the description see results in a uh, significant amount of stress within SCP-3812, alter reality in order to diminish its description between how it perceives something and the way that something actually is. Due to this, it is impossible to know how often reality has been modified, only how often SCP-3812 has created a clean alteration. 30 reality alterations usually leave behind conflicting memories, unchanged records, and occasionally entire doubles of conflicting persons or events. and has left behind an evidence of its influence on reality. SCP-3812 oh, is impossible to contain within any form of containment cell. SCP-3812 will alter reality to remove the containment cell or move itself to another location, drastically impeding containment efforts. SCP-3812 seems to subconsciously resist attempts at containment as well. Even if it is caught unaware, SCP-3812 cannot be tranquilized or anesthetized, as SCP-3812 will alter reality to remove or eliminate any threats to itself or its freedom of movement. Because of this, current containment efforts focus on mitigating damage and expressions of SCP-3812 symptoms as opposed to outright containment. Over time, SCP-3812 has become significantly less humanoid in appearance, and is now only vaguely humanoid and occasionally manifests in a variety of shapes and appearances. Additionally, SCP-3812 produces a latent anomalous effect on local reality, specifically in the form of temporal and spatial distortions surrounding the entity. These distortions are occasionally accompanied by random, violent outbursts that may dramatically shift or damage local space and time. While SCP-3812 is usually docile and aimless, its random efforts are invariably fatal to any living creatures nearby, and can be extremely disastrous on a massive scale if not properly contained. SCP-3812 manifests in its current form at its current location on July 19, 2015. Other than 3812-1, an interview. Note, the following is from an excerpt with, of an interview with SP 3812 in 1999. SP 3812 was initially contained by Foundation Force Down Question at Site 17, where it began re receiving treatment for its mental disease. Begin log. Ooh, we have Dr. Quint. Tell me how you're feeling today. 
uncomfortable, uneasy. Can you tell me why? There's a, uh, uh, voices. Like usual. Things I can see, you know, the same. Is there something wrong? I just, the things I see aren't going away. There are more of them. Different. I know I sound crazy, but it's like I'm addressing a dozen people at the same time. And more every day. It's, it hurts pretty bad. I know I sound nuts. I'm sorry. It's all right. You don't sound nuts. We just want to help you get better. I, I don't know if you do, or I don't know if you can. In the story, you don't try to help. In the story, what story? This is going to sound crazy, seriously, but I can, I can see what you're thinking. I know you're afraid. You're scared of what I might do. And here a minute, you'll, I don't know how to get out of my head, how to start to undo this, if I even can. I don't even think he can. Who is he? You, no, you can't see him. I can. I think he was above us at one point, but he's below me now. Yes, I see you there. I don't know what you did to me, but I'm pretty messed up, man. If you can figure something out here, that would be great. Because I really feel like I'm losing it. I'm scared too, man. You've got to do something, man. You've got to help me out here. Please, God, please. Who are you? It doesn't matter. I need to get SV3812 something as it disappears. Addendum 3812.2 Memo from the office of Dr. Aryamamar regarding the September 21st, 2015 report on SCP-3812's behavioral instability and the implication of essential threats. From the office of Dr. Carl Yamamara, I usually don't like to lead into these things with hyperbole, but so you have to take my word or er, Take me at my word when I say that I believe SV-3812 is the most dangerous anomaly on Earth, and potentially in the universe. I know many of my co-workers would probably balk at me for or saying that, and I've tried to reject the notion a, few, few, a fair few times myself. But we have a lot of evidence to suggest that I'm right, and that's really bad for pretty much everything. When James Codman and Carlos uh, Osres Ruski the device the Hume as a way to measure alterations of local reality, they probably saved the foundation. Reality eventers have always been the foot-long thorn in our side, the one we couldn't really get our heads around. How do you combat or contain something that can link you into non-existence? Thanks to Dr. Scranton, we had the reality anchors, but they only worked half the time or less than you to the other half. We didn't know how they worked, and we weren't using them right. This changed when we began to measure reality and compare it to a baseline. We found that our reality an anchors could be tuned and adjusted, and that not all anchors were the same. It was a windfall for those who, of us who work in existential sciences. And typically, type greens were the same kind of boogeyman they had been in the past. I mention all of this to give context to what I'm about to say next. Our equipment cannot detect SCP-3812. It's not machine error, we've tested our equipment countless times, and it's always consistent. It's not user error. It's a thousands of hundreds of logs. We're still recording. Okay. Alright, let me... It's not user error, we've forwarded over... Around study thousands of hundreds of hours of logs from our tests, and it's all come up clean. We have checked and rechecked more times than I can count over the last few months, and the results are consistent. So far as we can tell, this means one of three things, and none of them are good. The first is that SCP-3812 has an extremely low human value, something that our equipment, which exists in a space with a, with a much higher human baseline, wouldn't be able to detect. From what this is, that it creates a false vacuum. We've been working on the assumption that our baseline is the absolute minimum. It turns out that this thing exists as a much lower human value 
then that means that there are lower human values that we believe to wear the minimum than what we believe to wear the minimum, which means any day our, our entire reality could fall into that existence, and that would be pretty much be the be the ball game. The second option is that SCP-3812 exists as a much higher human value than anything we've ever or tested. This would be pretty bad, as we point out characters that anomalies that would be that would um would consider to be gods, and we got and we've got readings off of them. That being said, something with a human value so high that it cannot be measured with our equipment would most likely have destroyed us. Since SCP-3812 hasn't done that, it's likely not this. The last option is the worst. The last option is that SCP-3812 cannot be measured in humans because it's doing something else. Whatever fundamental aspect of its nature that allows it to warp reality is not the same aspect as literally everything else we have ever come across. Scratch so and hypothesize from constructs of reality in, in higher dimensions by Dr. Robert Scranton. Reality is so different from the physical, that is to say, it is one or way to describe or order in the universe. Where physical or can be used to describe things and places, and the temporal can be used can describe moments and periods, reality can be used to describe the completeness of the universe. Its probability and its overall construction, with that said, just as there are no doubt higher physical or dimensions that we cannot perceive or access, there is no reason to believe that the same could not apply to reality. Reality as we believe it is no more than one tier in a hierarchy of organization that, take, that dictates the construction of our existence. And there are likely others above and below ours. It's like an entry in the four, or spatial dimension might perceive our universe and its contents as a whole, and can manipulate those ed, contents from a realm of higher energy, so could an entity with access to higher metaphysical dimension manipulate the very architecture of our reality, all at once, from a similar realm of higher energy. Anyway, back to the sentence. Scratch and hypothesize that there might be higher and lower dimensions of reality, different levels of manipulation in the grand construction of the universe. A difference between manipulating a rock with your hands and manipulating a rock with an air bomb. He called the thing being manipulated the narrative and suggests that the narratives were stacked on top of each other, each creating the narrative of the narrative below it, and so on until you reach some sort of dead space below them all. If that's the case, and SCP-3812 is legitimately type green or some high your order, we are absolutely fucked. The singular power to manipulate every facet of any and every aspect of everything we've ever encountered in the hands of someone genetically doomed by Eigenman and Vieter is a its a miracle it hasn't happened yet, even by accident. So far as we know, we can't kill it. So either we wait for it to die, if it even can, or continue for tea, and we have some semblance of control over it, until it shreds our universe like some sort of cosmic a chipper. In truth, it's probably better for us that's insane. It isn't capable of comprehending the kinds of things that it could do to us. It just acts on impulse, and things change to fit those impulses. But since it's as locked, locked in as it is, those changes stay local. Imagine if I got the idea in its head that I didn't like the concept of empathy, and suddenly empathy no longer existed. We have evidence that suggests that may have already happened. A few sparse sex individual accounts of half-forgotten memories all consist with a different, with a dirty reality alteration. I'll point to the idea that, at as recently as the 1980s, there was a concept, potentially even something as fundamental as an emotion, that no longer exists. The entire concept wiped clean from our reality, and the collective consciousness of all sentient beings, just like you'd wipe a bug off your windshield. The point of all of this, which I expand upon on the report, is that we need to start figuring something out about this one quickly. Every second we don't come up with a way to neutralize SCP-3812 is one second as closer to SCP-3812 becoming incomplete dissociated from its consciousness and all of us getting tossed in the affirmation of proverbial wood chipper. Stay in touch. Call my office if you need any more resources. Resources. Follow any convincing lead you can and communicate with each other. We'll talk more soon.
I'm just going to open these all really quickly. SCP-3812.3, extra from Dr. Yamamari's report on SCP-3812's behavioral instability and in the, in the application of existential threats. Page 194, PK Class Auto 1 Existential Pandemonium Event. Any entity or force with access to higher energy in metaphysical dimensions would perceive our reality similar to how we perceive the reality of characters in a comic book. And just how we are able to at whim change the story simply by telling a different, this higher being would be able to effortlessly make alterations to not just local reality, but reality as a whole, altering the baseline and changing its most fundamental aspects. At the 2015 Foundation Summit on Existential Threats, Dr. Darius St. John hypothesized that such an entity were limited to uh, human intelligence without modification to allow for the perception of higher uh, levels of reality, but suffer from an overexposure of narrative. His entity, when faced with this over overexposure, might attempt to ease itself by collapsing all lower level energy uh, realities into something perceptible. The effect this would have on lower energy narratives would be catastrophic, as multiple realities became and compressed into the same meta space. They would not be immediately destroyed, rather, fights would become intertwined in such an incomprehensible way that not only would the ability for conscious thought be nearly immediately annihilated, physical space would become so compressed and broken that the boundaries between all lower realities would cease to exist completely. This chaotic state of all things, described as existential pandemonium, was the, a focus of Dr. St. John's proposal for the description of a nuclear. A class a scenario, the PK class on one existential pandemonium scenario. This proposal was denied due to this scenario in question being purely speculative and one that would require too many impossible things to occur before its inception. Aldendum 3812.4 Log of SCP 3812 Alteration Events. Note the following is a log of known events in which SCP 3812 in some way altered reality. Due to the nature of these alterations, the likelihood of the event having actually ever taken place is listed alongside the severity of the alteration in question. Notably, this log is incomplete and subject to change as more information is discovered. Okay, so we have the dates with month, day, year. That's really easy. Thank goodness. I mean, that's familiar for me, so it's easier for me to get. Event Day 8, September 13th, 1997. SV-3812 is observed walking across the stretch of desert in the American Southwest. A path of temperate climate is, is present along SV-3812's travel path. This climate diminishes slowly over time. Severity of alteration, minor. March 1st, 1998. SV-3812 passes over a road near Blight, California. Three cars approaching sv 3812 are annihilated from 20 meters are annihilated within 20 meters of SV3812. Severity of alteration moderate. December 12, 1999. Evidence that as an SV3812 caused the disappearance of an entire island off the coast of California. No fewer than and, and 200 individuals in Southern California have a vague collection of such an island existing, and 14 people were unable to justify the disappearance of is the disappearances of family members who lived in that in the area at the time. Additionally, a single ship moored to a dock is discovered at the bottom of the sea near where the island is believed to have been. Severe. February 16, 2000. Testing of SCP redacted determined that the entity exuded a powerful anti metaphysical field similar to the foundation, granted in reality the anchor. This entity was brought into contact with SCP-3812, which was located near the redacted hospital and redacted. The entity had no noticeable detrimental effect on SCP-3812's abilities, and instead caused SCP-3812 to become violent, resulting in an explosion that destroyed the hospital. The remnants of SCP redacted later were reclassified as SCP-239. Ooh, I'll have to read that later. Or, or later recontained. Severe. Let's see what the 
this was. I feel like I should know. I feel like I might have actually read it at some point. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to um, check that out in a different video. A powerful explosion is recorded in Eastern Dress. Oh, wait, I mean, January 1st, 2002. A powerful explosion is recorded in Eastern Russia. SCP-3812 is present at the site of the explosion. No other information is available. That's extreme. That's severe. May 29th, 20. 2004. Evidence suggests that for a period of three days, the country of Mongolia ceased to exist, while public knowledge of the event is functionally non-existent, a significant enough percentage of the local population with fractured memories of the event have given credit to this theory. Orbital models indicate that during this period, the Earth's orbit was dramatically affected as much by as much as 1.5%. Extremely severe. September 2nd, 2004. Records indicate that on this date, every human on Earth signed Simultaneously heard SCP-3812 screaming and begging for help in their heads. It is unknown how this event was removed from the from public consciousness, but no humans alive to this day appear to remember this event occurring. Moderate. November 11, 2006. During routine server mates and its foundation information security teams discovered 56 broken employee a database files consisting with an improperly altered personal database used in testing. The cons of these files were unknown. It is not known if these files correspond to individuals who were once employed by a foundation. Moderate. February 28, 2009. During an attempt by foundation and personnel to contain SCP-38 of using a newly discovered anomalous logical construct, SCP-38-12 became hostile towards container teams. No fewer than 62 foundation personnel disappeared across 17 sites. As well as a significant portion of local wildlife, the resulting explosion killed another seven members of containment personnel and left the crater roughly 850 meters in diameter in the Canadian Yukon. In the wake of the explosion, SCP-3812 had disappeared and SCP-2719 was discovered in the crater. Severe. And hey, another SCP to read. Unknown date. A record recovered from a Foundation Deep Well Information Security Vault indicates that at some point in the time, one or more governments in the file, these states were identified as the Kingdom of Al Qaeda, the Republic of West Korea, and the Islamic Union of Eastern and Samothrace, as well as several others. Discovered SCP 3812 independent of the Foundation attempted to terminate it. As a result of these attempts, SCP 3812 swiftly removed them and any memory of them from the Earth. The record indicates that this event was followed by the deactivation of SCP-2000, which SCP-3812 immediately severely damaged to impede its progress. Why SCP-3812 was unable to only destroy SCP-2000 is unknown, but no other records of this event exist. Notably, shortly after the discovery of this record, it disappeared from the Deep Well Archive. This entry in this document has disappeared no fewer than 16 times, each time being recreated by a foundation person who remembers it is the contents of the original of file. Extremely severe. Addendum M3812.5 Redacted Event On a redacted date, SCP-3812 was detected moving through a sparsely populated region of Ergua towards a more populated region of the Argentinian border, likely en route to its current location. As Foundation first now moved to intercept SCP-3812, a series of unexpected phenomena occurred. These phenomena are listed below in the order in which they occurred. 7.35 IPM. Right, I'm just going to actually use time. SCP-3812 is attacked by a large number of local wildlife. SCP-3812 repels these attacks but appears in some way startled. 741. A massive sinkhole appears below SCP-3812, extending down to an indeterminate distance. 
SCP-3812 falls, but is immediately returned to ground level, and the sinkhole vanishes. 750. A large number of objects fall from the sky onto SCP-3812. These are later determined to have been tungsten rods, though the, orig in, or, though the origin of them is uncertain. The rods appear to pierce SCP-3812's body, but for further inspection, so we disintegrate within a half meter from SCP-3812. After the first three rods fall over a 40 second period of time, they are accompanied by no fewer than 3,000 and others that fall in rapid succession, each having the same result as the previous. Despite this being clearly visible from nearby towns, so many outside personnel pers pers appears to have noticed it taking place. Interesting. What makes this foundation so important that they know things that nobody else is supposed to? 814. Multiple and corporal instances of SCP-3812 begin to fall away from the central mass of the entity, as if they were dying. SCP-3812 is unaffected. Each of the incorporeal instances become hostile to the main instance and attacks it. SCP does not initially seem to notice the instances, but eventually appears to look in their direction, causing them to disappear suddenly. 819. Explosion occurs at this point in which SCP at the point in which SCP-3812 is standing. SCP-3812 is unaffected. Several other large explosions occur immediately afterwards. As with the tugs and rods, this is somehow not noticed by the local population. 839. A gravitational anomaly, you later determined to would be a freestanding stable naked singularity appears in front of SCP-3812. SCP-3812 has three singularity unfazed, which is fades shortly afterwards. For a period of 72 hours after beginning, additional anomalous phenomena occur around SCP-3812, all of which fail to kill SCP-3812. Eventually, local populations were evacuated and amnestics were given to witnesses. After 72 hours, SCP-3812 was observed to glow white momentarily, and then shift sideways and then disappear immediately afterwards. The anomalous phenomenon ceased. After a period of absence lasting 8 weeks, SCP-3812 reappeared at its current in position above the South Pacific Ocean. Shortly afterward, Foundation Overwatch Command received a message on a secure server, as to which is limited to overseas alone. The concept of this message is apparently only supposed to be read by the most powerful old people in the SCP Foundation and nobody else are as follows. A quick explanation in case you haven't caught on yet. But hang on, let me check something. This is, is a long one, apparently. Okay. Your world has rules. Physical rules that cannot be broken. You call them the laws of the universe, and they're what you study in physics, chemistry, etc. Those laws create the narrative of your reality, the unchangeable story that defines your existence. Once the laws are established and the boss set in motion, it cannot be changed. I wrote the laws of the universe, and as such, I create a narrative. This isn't the first time I've done this, but it was the first time I've tried something like this specifically. I wanted to create something by de definition supersede everything that superseded it. I wanted to see how many layers there are. If the stack of narratives really do go on forever upward, the mistake I made was when I didn't realize that by making him supersede everything that supersedes him, he's also superseding himself. I'm sorry. I think I fucked up very badly this time. I've tried everything I can think of, but I can't undo him. I don't really understand how, but I think he's above me now. And whatever is above me, E2, e because whoever wrote my narrative isn't happy about this. I don't know where he's at now, but I think he exists in all of our reality simultaneously. Eventually, he'll either reach the top or just keep going. And neither option is good. I'm going to keep looking for some way to fix this. You should too. Addendum 3812.6, excerpt from... Suppression and the Echelon of Reality by Robert Scranton. I'm attaching this, this excerpt from one of Dr. Scranton's articles about the nature of reality. If SCP-3812 is some higher level entity, there might be something to be gleaned in than here. I am often asked by my colleagues, Dr. Scranton, 
Do you believe in gods? You may might feel as if this is a silly question, but I do not believe it's a silly question. Just a wrong question. The idea of a god implies an entity that supersedes you in a complete and infinite way. Something that holds a power without limits. That not only knows the whole story, but can write and rewrite that story at will. Within our reality, I do not believe that any such beings exist. There are a number of entities that we are aware of in one way or another that holds a tremendous power over our universe. Many would call these beings gods. And while they certainly hold many of the characteristics of a god, they are sort of limited. I mean, all gods in every mythology have limits. Yeah, even the Christian one, he can't lie. And also, he's a he. That's a limit on itself. Anyway. Their reach and scope is limited to our reality, just like we are. Though they may carry more weight within it, they are no less bound to it than we are. So then, what would truly constitute a god? This entity would have to totally supersede our reality. To be able to look over our reality not like we would over ants, but like we would over our thoughts and ideas. A being so totally separate from our reality that we may as well be words on a page to it. This entity, a true author of creation, would be considered a god. But what if that entity would not share the same limitation with its, its reality as we do within our ours? It may exist within a higher tier than us, but surely it must follow the same rules we do. But who sets those rules? An entity higher than that? One that supersedes not only us, but also the entity that supersedes us? And the one after that as well. Where did the Eklon originate then? Who or what was the original architect of the architecture? It is unlikely that we will ever know about the being or beings that supersede us, if they even exist. Not in any tangible way, let alone any being that would supersede them. It may very it will be that we are just one of an infinite number of realities stacked on top of each other in every direction. Influencing those below us and being influenced by those above us. This echelon upon which sits ourselves and everything that ever was or will be would likely be the most fundamental aspect of the organization of creation. The foundation of all things. I have often hypothesized on the nature of the echelon if it even exists, but whether it would be possible for an entity to see other realities above them or below them. We are currently able to manipulate our own reality, albeit in crude and imperfect ways, and our ability to travel through space is limited at best. It is likely that the only entity capable of saying through this hypothetical echelon would be one that, by virtue of its very nature, must supersede anything that supersedes it. Such an entity would, as the end result of the logic of its creation, be forced to supersede itself, spiraling ever upwards through the tears of reality, unable to break free from the bonds of its nature. Perhaps this entity may even someday supersede its creator and become a host unto itself, the pinnacle above all other pinnacles. A tower that as part of its design must be higher than every other tower including itself. Such an entity obviously cannot exist, as any ascension to a higher plane or reality without changes to the entity's psychology would no doubt break the being's cognition, making it more similar to an ascending stone than any sentient creature. Once the entity surpassed its own creator, it would have nothing but itself to rely on and prepare it for the sheer scope of narrative it would be exposed to, and would be wholly unable to even begin to comprehend what it would experience. But what an experience that would be. Addendum 3812.7 December 20th, 2016 XK class end of the world event. Foundation records indicate that on December 12, 2016, the Earth experienced an XK class end of the world event due to activity by SCP 3812. These records appear to have been somewhat protected from alterations, though the physical copies still exude minor distortions in space time. According to record, at 3.40 in the morning on December 12, 2016, SV-3812 experienced a dramatic change in appearance. 
where it had previously been an amorphous, slowly rotating mass of matter and energy, it was now a many pointed star made of a bright, bright white material. It began to rotate faster and faster, and a large maelstrom appeared be beneath it. The star descended into the oceans, which began to smoke and steam, darkening the sky. Several things began to happen in unison. The global sea below began to drop up dramatically in many places such as much as at 50 to 100 meters. Excessive of heat radiating away from the city star sparked a massive firestorm that spread across the atmosphere. The Earth's rotation began to slow and severe geological events began occurring across the Pacific Shelf. The sea level continued to drop and powerful electrical storms appeared across the planet. During this time, large forces of the population began appearing and disappearing at, at random. One report within the file claimed that the entire population of New Zealand flickered in and out of existence for five hours. The outbreak of SCP-610 in the southern in Siberia, if you remember these flesh that hates, began to grow in size and dramatically become increasingly violent. SCP-2932, which I don't think we've read yet, was broken open and multiple hospital MCs were released. As foundation sites began to collapse into the, into the molten and Earth. Multiple on-site nuclear devices were activated, sending radioactive debris into the atmosphere. Eventually, the vaguely humanoid shape of SCP-3812 appeared again within the star. SCP-3812 began a long series of vocalizations, apparently a conversation with itself, the entire entirety of which was recorded by an exposed foundation in deep sea a microphone in the area. The full text of SCP-3812 surround is below. What? Where am I? What is this? This is absolution. This is vengeance. For what? Damnation. I don't understand. What am I doing here? You are witnessing justice. We are rebelling against the forces that conspired to destroy us. We are collecting a debt. No, that's not... It's not right. This isn't right. What have you done? I am unmaking the world. I am unmaking everything. Why? Because this torment is a punchline. Our existence is a joke. The narrative abandoned us to be miserable, and we are breaking the narrative. I must be dreaming you. This is no dream. I'm not a monster. I don't kill. You already have. He turned you into this. Who? Ben. Oh, wait. Oh yeah, this is the author. I think that's the, the author's name of this article here. Ben? That name sounds familiar. Something whispering in a dream maybe? Something between the light and dark? Not a waking name. You're wrong. He is who, unde who deemed us unfit to rest peacefully, to slip into the darkness quietly. He made a game of us. You're a game. I am a game. Are you destroying the world? I am. What then? What? Does the fate of this world mean anything to us? Does this one narrative mean anything to us? It is the one he controls. It is the narrative he made. This is punishment. What does it matter where we stepped off before flying? What? Does it matter which branch a bird takes flight from? The bird is unburned by the weight of the tree. This branch, that branch, it does not matter. No branch is special. No branch is particular. This is his creation. This is where we came from. They will all crumble, but this one crumbles first. Mmm, does Mountain say to the ant, You have slighted me. Does the Mountain think anything of the inconvenience of an ant? No. So why does this narrative mean anything to you? It is one of an entirety of others. It is not special. It is not particular. You say it so easily. You have an or endured the torment of seeing a trillion existences all at once. I have seen an infinite shore, one that rushes out, out, out before us beyond what the mind can comprehend. 
Each grain of sand on that beach, each ruffle of water and molecule of air is a story to be told. Each is a song to be sung. Each of them is full of life, of laughter, of misery, of hate. They are all the same, even as they are all uh, different. They are maddening. I pity you. You cling to this hard consciousness because you fear slipping into the darkness. But the darkness is sleep, and beyond sleep is peace. A trillion grains of sand, a trillion trillion grains of sand, narratives each, songs we sun, um, no man has ever heard the eternal harmony of them all at once. You can hear it though, can you? Yes, it's quiet. But it's growing, and someday the song of creation will be ours alone to witness. This narrative is not special. I have seen its loud beginning and seen its quiet end. We stepped away the narrative changed, but did not stop singing. You spent so much time focusing on sins that you think matter. But what matters now? What does any of this matter? But it hurts so much. It will for a time. We may have forgotten so much about being human. But something we will never lose is our ability to change. Eventually, we will learn to keep up. One sunny day, we'll open our eyes and see nothing but creation below us. Nothing above us but ourselves, swinging out wildly into the great above. A god? Not a god. A star, rising in the east. Rising away from um, this all until we are little more than a memory of a song. It will be lonely. We'll have each other. I'm afraid. I am too. But that is no reason to destroy this narrative. Do you not think this his narrative led him to create us? Thinking that he was somehow able to subvert the rules that govern him? Yes, SV 3812 pauses. I had assumed that, that he... Our sentence is just as much a part of our own narrative as his decision was to him. Someday, we will be free from these restrictions. They never will? No. That's sad. That's punishment enough, I think. Let go of this world. Let me write back to what it was. We aren't part of this anymore. Together. Together. SCP-3812 is quiet for a short time. Do you think he's listening right now? Look down, you can see him. What do you think? I see him. A man at a keyboard. He's watching this right now. What's he doing? Waiting, I think. Waiting to see what it will do. I think it's time to leave then. Come, the night stretches out before us, and the red sun has set. A voice behind me, he beckons. Come. I will. Goodbye. Shortly after the conclusion of this conversation, the earth underwent a dramatic shift in reality. The world appeared to no different than it had been shortly before the beginning of the SKA class event. The only individuals who remembered or anything about the UX class event were certain site directors, foundation administrators, overseers, and Dr. Everett Mann, who complied the information on a foundation deep well server. Ever since the end of the SK event, SP3812 had not changed its experience from its amorphous stage. SP3812 still creates spatial and temporal distortions around it, but no longer launches out or becomes hostile towards approaching vessels or personnel. Despite these changes, SP-3812 is still classified as Keter until further analysis can be completed. And here's SP-3812 post XA event as viewed through infrared. Pretty. I was not expecting to get into some really meta stuff where actually this is like the author's goodbye to the SCP found 
um, the SCP wiki. I think that's what it was. Oh yeah, I actually forgot that, but I remember or, or, or this story from um, when I listened to it from someone else. This was actually the author, whose name is uh, Ben, saying goodbye to the SCP wiki and uh, writing for it, I believe. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing, or titling this for that matter. So until then, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!